So our scripture text today is John 17, 6 through 2, and then 1 John 5, 1 through 13. We'll start with John chapter 17. This is part of Jesus' high priestly prayer before he goes to the garden. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you, for I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Whilst I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost, except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them, in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Then 1 John 5, 1 through 13. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony, that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. This is our last Sunday in First John, and it seems to be a repetition and yet the opposite of what he was saying earlier, right? This is a one long sermon. <laughs> First John is basically one long sermon on the Gospel of John, as far as we can tell. Each of these are little snippets written as a, as a sermon. Last time we had the text that says God is love. How do we know that we love God? Is if we obey his commands and love his people. <laughs> it says you can't love God without loving the people. This is then reverses it and says, how do we know that we love God's children? When we love God and keep his commandments. The two go together. It doesn't seem like it does to us because we struggle with both of those, right? 
we struggle with loving one another, at least loving one another all the time. But part of this is that God helps us to love each other because he is love and gives us that love. And one way that we know that we love God is when we can love and show love for one another because sometimes these things seem so ethereal, right? We go, this is something that is intangible. How do I, how do I know? I actually had someone tell me this last week. She grew up in a difficult household and then had influence from many different type areas of faith, but in particular, one Baptist background that was very fundamentalist as such, and said, you have to follow all the rules or you're not going to heaven. She went, how do I know that I have eternal life? That's what this text is about. How do, I, how do we know? Is there are these tangible things to the intangible. These ways that we can know. But part of it is the promise, holding on to the promise. It says, if you have the Son, if you believe in him, that Jesus is God and man, God's word incarnate, and that he came, right? He has the testimony of both the water and the blood. He was really born. He really died. He really rose again. He was baptized in water, went through the baptism of water, went through the baptism of blood and death. He gives us the baptism of both water and blood, right? We know that he really died. How do they, the Gospel of John points this out. When they pierced his side, he was already, he had given up his spirit, he had already died. The Roman soldier didn't kill him, he had given up his spirit. Water and blood separated, flowed out. And he gives us his spirit. He gives his spirit as testimony to us. To remind us. To help us apply this in our hearts and in our lives. It says, if you have the Son, if you believe in him, that he is God, is part of God, is God's expression in this world, you have life. Those who reject Jesus as the Son of God do not have life. And that's hard to hear. But that's what it says. And there are many who reject Jesus as the Messiah, the one through whom we have eternal life. Jesus gives us the Spirit who is the truth. Jesus also says he is the truth, right? So we know that this Spirit is the Spirit that Jesus gives when it leads to truth. There are many spirits in the world, but some lead to falsehood. And we are to test whether this spirit is of the truth. Is this, is this God's spirit that is speaking, or is it another spirit that's speaking? We don't often talk about that here in America. People think it's just for play, that people consult spiritists and others. There are spirits out there but they're not all benevolent. <laughs> and there's only one Holy Spirit. But the amazing thing is that the Holy Spirit is given and promised to all who believe in Jesus. And he gives us that application, that promise to speak to our hearts and into our lives and to lead and guide in truth. That when we open the scripture and say, Lord, help, <laughs> God's spirit shows up to lead and guide. If we don't say, Lord, help, we don't always get, <laughs> get instruction, right? This is the testimony, once again, that God gave us eternal life. 
This is the John 3.16 of 1 John. Brings it down really short. Whoever has the Son, this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Praise the Lord that we do have life in his Son. We do have assurance of eternal life. Not just for the future, but for now. And not just for now, but for the future. Coming back to my friend's question, how do we know? It's when we receive by faith that the Spirit gives us. So when we're struggling with faith, we can say, Lord, help me. I believe, help my unbelief because I'm struggling right now. Help me to see and understand. Help me to trust you with all of this. It says it comes down to this, that our faith that God gives holds us to this, right? Instructs us. And it is by faith we are saved. By grace. God's grace. That is completely undeserved, but also total grace. It's not by our works. Right? It's not by the things we do that we are saved. But it's by Jesus that we are saved. And that's good news. When our spirits are unsure, and I know it may not seem like an everyday application, but we never know, as I found out this past weekend, we never know when we're called home. And it's good to have the assurance and the understanding of what it means to have eternal life and who, through whom we have eternal life. That we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be worrying about what comes next. It's easy to worry about the next day, about what happens when we die, what happens to our family, to our friends, to our kids. You have kids or grandkids, or say the world's in chaos, what do we do? But we don't have to worry if we have the Son. Because we can trust our lives to Him, we can trust our family's lives to Him. We can trust this world into His hands because He made it. And He loves it more than we do. God is good, and He has given us His Son who gives us life. So may we each know for ourselves this life. And if it's something that you've been wondering about, struggling with, you can ask the Lord for that assurance yourself. And I'm always available to talk as well and to pray with you. Or if you have folks in your life who are questioning, because you're all here, I'm, I'm assuming you all know this yourself, right? But if you have folks in your life who are questioning, pray with them about this. Whoever has the Son has life in its totality. And that's good news. Amen.